So now, we will discuss the three branches of the government, or also known as the Article 6, 7, and 8 of the 1987 Philippine Constitution. Again, one of the manifestation of the of a democratic and republican state is to have a three branches of government by means of the principle of separation of powers and checks and balances. Again, we have the three branches of government by means of the principle of separation of powers and checks and balances. It is because one of the demo manifestations of a democratic and republican state is to have the separation of powers. And the division of the three branches of government can be classified by their own or specific functions and purposes. So the purpose of the separation of powers or the three branches is to delimit or limit their powers or the using of their powers and of course to avoid bias and abuse of their powers. Another is the checks and balances. So when we see checks and balances, there must be a interrelationship between the three branches of government or their department must be checked and balanced from the other department. For example, if we wanted to create a bill into law, there must be a relationship between the three branches. So let us now discuss the structure of the three branches of government. Let's go first with the legislative. So when we say legislative department, this is the lawmaking body of the Philippines. So vested by the Congress and our Congress divided into two, the upper house and the lower house. So when we say lower house, composed of the House of Representatives, or the congressmen, and our House of Representatives headed by House Speaker. And our House Speaker today is Alan Peter Cayetano. While when we see Upper House, or also known as the Senate, it composed of 24 senators, headed by the Senate President, which is, who is the current Senate President today is Senator Vicente Soto III, or also known as Tito Soto III. How about the Executive Department? So when we say Executive Department, or the department who execute the law from the word itself, or carries out the law. So it composed of the cabinet members or the cabinet departments. So these are the, the different departments such as DepEd, DILG, DOH, and other departments. Next is the vice president. And our vice president today is VP Lenny Robredo. And of course, executive, we have the president itself, or, or our current president today is President Rodrigo Roa Duterte. And the last department or branch of the government is the judicial department. Judicial department, also known as the department who synthesize or evaluate the law. So it composed of the other courts or lower courts, and of course, the largest and highest court in the Philippines, which is the Supreme Court, headed by Chief Justice, and our Chief Justice today is Chief Justice Justado Peralta, appointed last year of our president. So now, let us see the their basic powers 
of the following branches of the government. Let's go first with the Legislative Department or the Article 6 of the 1987 Philippine Constitution. So let us see first the different qualifications to become a senator. So the Section 3 of the Article 6 provide the qualification of senators that no person shall be a senator unless he is a natural citizen or natural born citizen of the Philippines. Another is at least 35 years of age on the day of the election, at least are able to read and write, a registered voter, and for not less than two years resident here in the Philippines, immediately preceding the day of the election. How about the qualifications of the House of Representatives? So we have the Article 6, the provision of the qualifications that no person shall be a member of a House of Representatives unless he is a natural citizen of the Philippines. So the difference of the two of the senators, if the senators must be in a 35 years of age on the day of the election, the House of Representatives must be a 25 years of age on the day of the election. And the other qualifications are same. Um, another different differences or difference is the resident of the government officials were in for not less than one year. So again, the qualifications are the natural born citizen of the Philippines, at least 25 years of age on the day of the election, able to read and write, a resident of the Philippines for not less than one year, and of course, a registered voter. Legislative is by the virtue of Section 23 that the Congress, by a vote of two thirds of both houses in joint session assembled voting separately, shall have the sole power to declare the existence of a state of war. So, in times of war or another national emergency, the Congress, by law, authorized the President for a limited period of time and subject to such restriction, restrictions as it may prescribe to exercise powers. Again, one of the powers of the legislative is to declare the existence of a state of war. So a state of war is different from rebellion or invasion. So later, we will discuss that. Now with the qualifications of the executive department or to become a president. So according to section 2 of the article 7 or the executive department, that no person may be elected president unless he is a natural born citizen of the Philippines. That is one. Another is a registered voter. Second. Third, able to read and write. Fourth, at least 40 years of age on the day of the election. And lastly, as a resident of the Philippines for at least a 10 year 10 years immediately preceding such election. So how, how about the vice president? So by the virtue of section 3 of the article 7, there shall be a vice pres president who shall have the same qualifications and term of office. 
and be elected with the same manner as the president. Meaning, if the president has a six term of office or six years term of office, same as well with the vice president. And if the president elected by the majority or the voting of or the vote of majority, same also with the vice president. He may be removed from office in the same manner as the president. For example, if the president can impeach by by the power of the legislative, same as well with the vice president. Powers of executive is provided by the section 17 of the article 7 that the president shall have control of the all executive departments, bureaus, and offices. He shall ensure that the laws be faithfully executed. So, um, for example, that the president are the one who appoint different secretaries and other government officials or members of his or her departments or cabinet members. So the different secretaries from the different cabinets or departments, the president has a control of all the department or the cabinet members. If he can appoint um, leaders or secretaries, he can also fire or remove them. Another power of the executive department, by the virtue of Section 18, that the president shall be the commander-in-chief of all armed forces of the Philippines. Or, in other way, that the president is the commander-in-chief of the AFP, or the armed forces of the Philippines, or the army itself. Whenever it becomes necessary, he may call out such armed forces to prevent a suppressed lawless violence invasion or rebellion in case of invasion or rebellion when the public safety requires it it may be or period exceeding 60 days suspend the privilege of writ of habeas corpus or place the philippines or any part of there under martial law therefore section 18 provides that the president can declare martial law or the only one who can declare martial law is the president. So when we say martial law, this is a military type of government. Of course, the supreme power comes from the AFP or the commander-in-chief, which is the president itself. But there is or there are requirements to declare a martial law. So again, to declare a martial law, there must be a invasion or rebellion. Otherwise, if there is no invasion or rebellion, he can't declare martial law. So what if, if there is a conflict? Within 48 hours from the proclamation of martial law, or the suspension of the privilege of the writ of habeas corpus, the president shall submit a report in a person or writing to a congress. The congress voting jointly by vote at least majority of all its members in regular special session. Upon the initiative of the president, the congress may in the same manner extend such proclamation or suspend for a a period to determine by the Congress. Meaning, if the president can declare martial law, the Congress can suspend or revoke the declaration of martial law. If the reason is invalid. So a good example of this is the declaration of martial law 
in Mindanao by President Duterte. So the Congress in a Senate conference, they are going to vote, majority of the vote, if the declaration is valid. If it's not, the Congress may suspend or revoke that declaration and if it's necessarily also that they can or they wanted to extend the declaration, the Congress must decide also the period of time to determine the extension of the martial law. About the suspension of the privilege of the habeas corpus or the writ of habeas corpus, we will discuss this in Article 3 or the Bill of Rights. So another power, except in case of impeachment, otherwise provided in the Constitution, the President may grant reprieves, commu commu commutations, pardons, and other forfeitures after conviction by final judgment. He, he shall also have the power to grant amnesty with the concurrence of a majority of all the members of the Congress. Or in a simple definition that Section 90 provides that President can do or have a power to have a pardon or to grant a pardon and amnesty to those prisoners, especially for the government officials. So when we see amnesty, to lessen their, their year of sentence to the, um, or to become a detainee. So let's go now with the Judicial Department. Judicial Department, according to Section 4 of the Article 8, that the Supreme Court shall be composed of a Chief Justice and 14 Associate Justices. It may sit and bank or in its discretion in division of 3, 5, or 7 members. Any vacancy shall be filled within 90 days for the occurrences thereof. So our Chief Justice, again, current Chief Justice Justado Peralta, appointed by the President. It is because Chief Justice can be or can have their retirement as well. They can resign or they can also impeach. And one of the powers of the Judicial Department is to exercise original jurisdiction affecting ambassadors, public ministers, and consuls. And the petitions for prohibitions to quo warranto and habeas corpus. Or if we going to generate the power of the Judicial Department, they are the one or they are the department who can review, revise, and reverse or modify the rules of court or the final judgment and orders of lower court. So, for example, um, in terms of social justices, they are the one who will um, observe and preserve our social justice or the justice here in the Philippines by means of the conviction or the convicting of um, decision of the court from the different cases. And for example, all cases in which the constitutionality or validity, or they can also um, by the final judgment of the, the cases itself, or from the word itself, the one who judge the different cases of the different violations from the laws, meaning that the judicial department are the, the, are, is the department that can interpret the um, provision of the laws or the constitution. Same as well with the actions 
of the people or the citizen of the Philippines. 